Do you need one tip for every stroke in your game? Let's do it. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna give you one simple tip to fix every stroke in your game. All right, let's talk about the top spin ground stroke. When you take your racket back, have your hand, elbow, and shoulder all the same height. So you can do this, and you can you know, push pause, get your racket, and follow along as we go here. Turn with both hands on the racket, and just look to see that your hand, elbow, and shoulder are all the same height. See, when you take the racket back high like this, then it starts that C circular swing. You get easy racket speed and it doesn't take a long time to swing at all. But also when your elbow is the same height as your hand and your shoulder, rather than like this, when your elbow is up, it helps keep the racket face closed. That helps us hit topspin and also keeps the racket on the hitting side of the body. When you drop your elbow, look how that affects the racket. If I drop my elbow and now my hand and my shoulder are the same height, but my elbow's low, that opens up the racket and actually makes it very easy for the racket to go onto the wrong side of my body. So I want the racket on the hitting side of my body and I also want that racket face closed. Closed means pointing down, makes it very easy to hit topspin. So shadow swing, film yourself, whatever you gotta do. Just make sure that your hand, elbow, and shoulder are all the same height. All right, let's talk about the two-handed backhand. When you are done hitting the two-handed backhand, I want you to do what Novak does. He extends up from his shoulders. When Novak hits the backhand, he extends up, and what lifts the racket is the shoulders. I'll show you this from the front view. When you are hitting, you want your shoulders lifting. What I typically see is players bending from the elbows. I call this the bicep curl finish. When you bend from the elbows, it makes for a much shorter contact zone. The contact zone is the distance you can hit the ball and the ball goes in. So we want a long contact zone. That means we don't have to be perfect with our timing. When you have a very short contact zone, it means you have to hit the ball perfectly in the right spot, and if you don't, the ball's not going in. It's also, bending the elbow, is also what causes hitting the frame a lot. So if you're someone who hits the frame, especially the bottom frame, on your two-handed backhand, it's most likely because you're bending your elbows too much as you're hitting the ball, and that lifts the racket up too much rather than extending out. From the back view, you'll see it's an extension up. So my right arm and my left arm are extending up as I lift the ball. Watch Novak hit a backhand, you'll see that what lifts the racket is actually his shoulders, not his elbows, as he's hitting the two-hander. All right, let's talk about the one-handed backhand. It's one of my favorite subjects. I'm not a one-hander, but I, I really love helping students with their one-handed backhand because they tend to make a similar mistake. Yes, it's called a one-handed backhand, but it's not one-handed the entire time. In fact, the majority of the time, the one-handed backhand is two-handed. So when you take your racket back, it's two hands. But here's the key. When you drop your racket, it's two hands as well. So what I want you to do, and I'm right-handed, so this is my left hand, I am gonna make sure that when my racket drops, I touch my left knee with my left hand, with my knuckles of my left hand. Then I let go and hit. So you wanna think of turn high with both hands, drop with both hands, and then hit the ball with one. So the drop needs to be with both hands. Here's why. When you drop the racket with only one hand, what typically happens then is that player opens up and spins out. And they have a short contact zone, similar subject to what we talked about with the two-hander. And it also just makes it so that you're not super accurate because you're swinging across rather than swinging towards your target. So what we want on the one-handed backhand is the arms to go apart. Right, so we want there to be a, a, a counterweight that's going backward with the non-hitting hand. Well, really the only way you're gonna get that counterweight is if it comes forward at first, so that it has a place to go. So an easy way to bring your non-hitting hand with the racket, so that it's in front of your leg, watch the pros, they get their non-hitting hand in front of their leg. Then from here, when you're hitting, you can move the non-hitting hand back because it came forward enough. So you wanna bring your non-hitting hand so if you're right-handed, that's your left hand, bring it to your left knee, then let go, and then separate your hands. From the side again, it looks like this. So it's back high, drop down with both hands. I'm touching, and obviously I'm demonstrating this where I'm stopping. You wouldn't stop when you're actually hitting. It's smooth, and then just continues on. But watch my left hand. Watch how it goes to my left knee, it goes to my left knee, then I move it back. So the left hand goes like this. 
it goes down to my left knee and then back. That's the counterweight that allows me to swing out toward my target. It allows me to use acceleration because as this arm goes back, I get to move this arm back. It makes it so I have a longer hitting zone. It's amazing what happens to one-handed backhands when they drop with both hands. I kind of call this the one and a half hander. It's almost like the, the racket or the ball, if it had a brain, the ball sees you coming at it and like, wait, are they gonna hit me with two hands? And then you almost feel like you still have one and a half hands on the racket and then you let go. The later you let go on your one-handed backhand, the better off you're gonna be. All right, let's talk about your volleys. Now I'm gonna use the same tip on both forehand and backhand volley. And the idea is, and, and as a coach, I've been coaching for a long time and when I hear and I used to say a certain thing. I used to say, keep your racket head up. Keep your racket head up, right? Because when you hit the volley, it's best if the racket is typically above the hand. It's a stronger wrist position rather than being like this. But I started to think about it and I'm thinking, wait a minute, if they're hitting the, let me, let me get this ball here. If, if you're hitting the ball, and let's say you hit a volley like this. So this is a common position to be in. And then it's very wristy and, and, and floppy and you, you can't really hit touch volleys or angle volleys if you're in this position. If the ball is in the middle of my racket, then the problem wasn't that I didn't keep the racket head up because the racket's in the right spot. So I stopped teaching keep your racket head up. I, I don't say that to my students anymore. Keep your racket head up, that's not what I say. I say keep your hand down because if you're hitting the ball and the ball's in the middle of your strings and you're hitting like this, the problem isn't that your racket wasn't out. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that you didn't have your hand down. So the idea is you want your hand, your hitting hand, lower than the ball. That forces your racket to be up and then you get the correct wrist position. So here I got the Topspin Pro, amazing product. You need to get one of these. It's pouring down rain, but I get to practice my technique on this right now. So I'm gonna put my hand lower than the Top Spin Pro. And so I'm gonna put my hand low and just bump. And I'm practicing seeing the ball, putting the middle of the racket where the ball is gonna be, but notice if I just remove my racket, look where my hand is in relation to the ball. This is typically what we see from recreational players. It's the same height or th the hand is above the ball. You want your hand below the ball. You can even do this without a ball. I'm sorry, without a racket. You can just practice this putting your hand down and then look, my racket is exactly where it needs to be. Same thing on the backhand. I'm gonna put my hand lower than the ball. That forces my racket to be up. That's the strong wrist position that you want on the volleys. And by the way, you can do it with a two-handed volley as well. Keep your hands below, or that your hand below contact height on a volley that forces your racket head to be up and you'll hit amazing volleys. All right, let's do the overhead. I wanna talk about your non-hitting hand on the overhead. You want to turn on the overhead with both hands. So the ball goes up in the air, please don't point. When the ball goes up in the air, turn the way the pros turn. They turn with both hands. A, a few months ago, I made a video uh, with Roger, uh, not with, I wish, with Roger, showing Roger Federer's uh, overhead. And someone in the comments wrote, I, I never noticed that Federer turns with both hands on the racket. You wanna turn almost like an American football quarterback. You wanna turn with both hands and you wanna show the back shoulder to your opponent, but turn with both hands. Then you're gonna reach up as you knock off the birthday hat then you wanna tuck your non-hitting arm, the left arm for me, against your body. And you can basically cross your arms. So it's turn with both hands, reach up, and then tuck into your body. You know, I can't reach up super high because the ceiling is pretty low here in my basement, but you're gonna turn with both hands, reach up. Notice how sideways I am to the, to the court and to the, you as my opponent. And notice I'm finishing sideways as well. There's a bonus tip. Finish sideways on your overhead, don't face forward. Finish sideways, hitting side spin. So turn with both hands. So this is about the non-hitting hand. Keep the racket on when you turn, reach up, and then tuck when you're done. And on the serve, this is classic <laughs> Ryan, um, but uh, I got the birthday hat, right? The birthday hat. If you don't know the concept of the birthday hat, what we need to do when we move our racket up is to feel like we're saluting or we're wearing a party hat, we're knocking off the party hat. 
but I want to take it a step farther here and I want to help you understand what to do with your non-hitting hand at this point. So when you are hitting a serve, and, and Federer and Djokovic are amazing at this, you're going to be in this position where you're hitting the birthday hat, but when you're hitting the birthday hat and you film yourself and the racket is in over the head, going from front to back, you can see it from this position, it's here, so I'm going from the front, like the brim of my hat, back behind me. When you make that move, have your non-hitting hand higher than the racket. So most players, they toss the ball, and then as they start to bring the racket in over their head, their non-hitting arm drops, and their shoulders level out. Watch Federer, watch Djokovic, and stop when the racket is above their head. And you'll notice their non-hitting hand is higher than their racket. It's amazing the shoulder tilt, the reach, and then from here, at this point, when you hit the birthday hat, that's when it drops out in front and then tucks in against the body. But look at, look at your serve. Go out and film yourself serving. Shadow swing some serves. Look in a mirror or film yourself. Put your phone up and just shadow swing the way I am at your house. And see if you can get into this position where the shoulders are tilted and the non-hitting arm, the tossing arm, is way up as you're passing the racket in over the head. In fact, if you look at Federer at certain angles, it almost looks like they're touching. It almost looks like his racket, now they're not, obviously, but it looks like his racket and his forearm are touching. That's how close they come to each other because that non-hitting arm is up. So review this video often and maybe write some notes down because I gave you one tip for each stroke and if you follow each one of these tips, there is no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. Be sure if I've ever given you any value and you need to get a Topspin Pro that you use my affiliate link in the description below. I absolutely love this thing. It's unbelievable and my students love it too. Uh, if you have a gift that you need to get for that tennis player in your life, if you're a club owner or a club director, you gotta get a bunch of these to have stations and targets uh, or um, uh, wait, ways for your students to practice. I can remember putting three of these in the back. You're, you're feeding balls to students and you got three people in front, three people in back. The people in back don't have to wait. Give them a Topspin Pro to practice their technique in the back. They're gonna absolutely love it. But get yourself a Topspin Pro. It's awesome. My affiliate link is in the description below. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.